Good evening. It's Thursday, November 5th, and on your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 waiting its 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a lead manufacturing engineer here at SpaceX. Welcome to our webcast coverage for GPS-3 Space Vehicle 4 for the Space Force. The U.S. Space Force satellites provide mission-critical global access, persistence, and awareness for our national security and have become vital to our global community and world economy. The Global Positioning System, or GPS Payload, will provide a diverse range of navigation and timing services for both civil and military purposes. Today's payload will join 31 operational GPS satellites already on orbit and will help to serve over 4 billion users worldwide. And as you may recall, about a month ago, we stood down from Falcon 9's launch attempt of this mission due to an auto abort during engine ignition caused by early start behavior on two engines. This was a good abort by Falcon 9. The rocket did exactly as it was programmed to do when the, in when the data indicates something doesn't look as we expected to right before liftoff. We sent those two engines to Texas for further testing, and it turned out that there was a blockage in a vent passage that leads to a relief valve on the gas generator. The blockage was caused by a masking lacquer residue that had hardened during the build process, but once we removed it, the gas generator was restored to normal behavior during subsequent testing. This was a really great find. It allowed our teams to fix something that is very subtle but can have some negative impact on the engine behavior, as well as allowed us to make sure that we can prevent this from happening again in the future. The two engines which first exhibited the early start behavior on this booster were replaced with new ones which were tested again during our full duration static fire. Both engines look great and the rocket is healthy for flight today. What's really exciting is that this specific booster is planned to support the GPS-35 mission next year, which will be the first time that the U.S. Space Force has agreed to fly a flight-proven booster. Okay, nine. We're pressurizing first and second stage tanks for launch. Waiting for final go. The mission director, go for launch. Flight. Mission director has given the go for flight. Everything continues to look good. Pressurizing the tanks one final time here to get ready for liftoff. But right now at T minus 30 seconds and counting, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 with GPS-3 space vehicle number four. like we did with the first stage engines, getting ready for ignition of the upper stage engine. 
Now coming up in just over 30 seconds, the usual three sequence event that'll happen in rapid succession. Main engine cutoff will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines you can see glowing there in the night sky. Stage separation, and then we'll get startup of the second stage engine. Nice view from the ground camera looking up at the nine Merlin 1D engines on the business end of the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage separation confirmed. So we've had a good separation. MVAC up on power. On the left screen, the first stage continuing to coast down range as it begins to deploy those large titanium grid vents. Trajectory continues to look right down the middle. Both stages are following nominal trajectories. Guidance confirms we're on nominal trajectory with both stages. Acquisition of signal, Maryland. Maryland reports they've got signal from the second stage. Next event coming up is payload fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. A nice view from the camera looking forward, the GPS-3 satellite with the two payload fairing halves separating. Everything continuing to go well on this mission, 3 minutes and 42 seconds into flight. First stage continuing to coast to Apogee, headed downrange. Second stage engine at full power, everything's looking good with the MVAC engine. Right now trajectory heading us to where the Bermuda ground station can hear us. We've heard the call out. Acquisition of signal. Bermuda now getting the telemetry from the Falcon 9 second stage. So four minutes, eight seconds into flight. Everything going well on the flight of Falcon 9 with GPS-3. Both stages continue to follow nominal trajectories. And at T plus four minutes and 20 seconds, we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns. And we just passed T plus 4 minutes and 23 seconds. And that's actually when the first stage reaches Apogee of 120 kilometers, almost 400,000 feet. At stage separation, the first stage velocity is about 2,200 meters per second or 5,000 miles per hour. So right after stage separation, the first stage still moving at such a high velocity. It continues to raise its altitude as it coasts for a couple of minutes. Basically, the first stage almost doubles its altitude from stage separation, which occurred at about 69 kilometers or 226,000 feet to when it reaches Apogee, and then it starts its return back to Earth. And again, Apogee is the highest point or the furthest that it is away from Earth in the trajectory of the first stage. Now the next, next major milestone that you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see on your screen is the first stage's entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight the center E9 engine, and then partway through, we relight the E1 and E5 engines so that we have a total of three M1D L engines, helping to slow the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We're just about 40 seconds away from that entry burn beginning. Today's entry burn.